Remember, what brings me to my next point. Don't smoke crack. Thank you, LT, because you know what? That's, that is that is very apropos PSA right now because we got a lot of Giant fans out there smoking the crack. And I'm not I'm saying that figuratively, not literally, because we want to talk about Saquon Barkley. We want to talk about the Giant options for Saquon Barkley. We, we want to talk about a whole plethora of stuff today. Um... Let, let, let's just get let's just get into this right off the bat. You have a certain segment of Giant fans who are sitting there, sitting there, uh, basically sitting there going, well, you know, Joe Shane did a wonderful job by by not signing Saquon Barkley, not by not giving into his demands, by not taking that extra million dollars or so that Saquon wanted and giving to him. He held firm. He held strong. We need a GM like that. We needed a GM like that, you know, because Dave Gettleman, what he did was he, he gave out all these bad contracts. Just look at the Leonard Williams deal. King of the almost sack. All right, I'm going to stop you right there. And I see this on Twitter. I've been watching this on Twitter. I've been watching this in comment sections on YouTube. That people are saying that the Leonard Williams deal was a bad deal by Gettleman, and we have to get away from those deals. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down the truck here for a minute. I remember multitudes of people telling me what a wonderful deal the Leonard Williams deal, how marvelous it was. And some of us, some of us brought up the fact of how it was going to destroy the cap for years to come. Now, as, as we're at the end of the deal, we're at the big money portion of the deal. Everyone's now people are saying, that's oh, a horrible deal. Make up your freaking minds. I will say this. You could love me. You can hate me, but I stand by my convictions and I stand by my statements. I, I've never seen a fan base at times so wishy-washy and, 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 and just they turn on you, you, they turn on a dime. You can't say two years ago Leonard Williams deal was this greatest deal in the world because he took less to stay in the Giants and he's this thing and he's this guy and then he doesn't pan out because he basically reverted back to King of the Almost Sack. And then turn around when Joe Shane plays hardball with Saquon Barkley and then turn around and say, well, we needed a GM that wouldn't overspend like Leonard, like the Leonard Williams deal. Whoa. That drove me. That just drove me crazy yesterday. Giants have multitude. Giants have some options in reference to um, Saquon Barkley. And, and I'm curious because one of the options is, is, is basically just to go nuclear. is just to pull out the tag, just to rescind the tag. And I, I talked about this on the show yesterday, about how Barkley at some ways has Thor's hammer. Because in some regards, he is holding, he could hold the Giants hostage in reference to the running game. And what I meant by that, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repeat it again for the people that, uh, you know, I always say this, this, this dance for, you know, this dance ain't always for everyone, <laughs> just for the sexy people. And the slow people aren't going to get this. Saquon Barkley, it, it as long as that tag is still out there, is, is there's $10 million sitting out there. There's just 10 million. He's got the giants have $10 million just sitting cap wise out there. Cause Barkley could sit around and say, ah, you know, I'm going to side to sign my tag. So for the people that want to go out and get, uh, go get like Ezekiel Elliott or, or go get Dalvin cook, Dalvin cook already turned down a deal from Miami because it was too low. Cause it wasn't where he wanted to be. Cause he still wants around. He wants over $10 million. Which I understand, which I understand because he's that he's he is that type of back. And Cook has come out and his agents have come out and said he's looking for a significant offer. He's not just looking to sign a low end deal. Now the problem is for the Giants to even to consider going out and getting a running back such as Dalvin Cook, they would have to go nuclear and pull the tag away from, and rescind Saquon Barkley's tag. Because right now they only have a little over $4 million in cap space with the rule of 51. And once that rule of 51 expires, you're going to have to turn around and figure out exactly what you're going to do with those other two guaranteed, con not guaranteed contracts, but those two contracts, uh, two other contracts are going to go against the cap. So I don't think you're going to give all $4 million to Dalvin cook because of the fact, the only way you could potentially do that is to rescind Barkley's tag. And I don't think the Giants are going to walk away from Barkley. I don't think they're just going to walk away and get nothing for him. 
Barkley did an interview, I guess, while all this was going down, and, and it's kind of interesting, and it's, it's three minutes, uh, so I want to play some of this, and I want to talk about this, because he talks about his, his, his the franchise tag, he, and, and it's, it's actually a really good interview. I think it was off a podcast. Hold on. Let, let's play a little bit of this. We're kind of talking to it. I alluded to it a little earlier when we were talking off air. You got to go, It's hard. It's a hard balance, because you got to go back to... I got to go back to when I was that kid and, and Copley, you know, didn't have, I didn't come from much. I didn't have a lot. Never felt like it. My parents did a great job, but I was always aware, you know, we didn't make a lot of money. Um, you know, I, I, I remember sitting down one time, I was on the phone with my dad. I was on the phone with a, uh, with my manager and, and my marketing guy. And my dad was sitting next to me and a deal came up and, the money was, it was a good, it was a good amount of money, mm-hmm. but the timing, I wasn't able to, I wouldn't have been able to do it. So I had to turn it down. And my dad's like sitting next to me and he just like looked at me and smiled. And I'm just like, what are you smiling about? He was like, you know, like me and your mom together when, in one year, when, in two years, would not have made that deal you had to turn down. Mm-hmm. So like, you got to go back to that place. And obviously that's more of like off the field, but you got to go back to that kid and you got to go back to those fans. Like, you come to the Giants game, I see a lot of fans with two a two six jersey. I see a, a lot of people that come up to me, like the game that I play, which I play free for majority of my life, I'm able to have an impact. I'm able to create memories for kids, for fans, for people. So that's why like when I when I you have to take a, a mature route, because you can't just come out here and be like, Nah, fuck that. Like, I need something that's fair. Like, I want something that's fair. Because, like, yeah. fair, what are we talking about? Like, at the end of the day, like, we, we talk, a tag is still $10 million. And I'm, I'm well aware of that. And it's $10 million is a lot of money. A lot of money. And when you especially look at the, uh, the economics of our, our country, and you look at the people in our country and where the, the poverty rate is, and I'm, I'm a person that comes from that, like, it's hard to be like, you know what? Like, you see it on a... On, on TV, on ESPN, Saquon reportedly turned down this, turned down that. Like, and you got fans like, how much do you want? Like, we just want you to be here and this and that third. Like, that's when it gets a little more upsetting to me because it's like, oh, but that's not the whole story. Like, I, I know I'm not leaking out these stories and the, who's the source and then the third. Like, I don't want to come off like I'm greedy. I don't want to come off like I'm arrogant. Like, at the end of the day, you still got to do what's right for you, though. And... $10 million is a lot of money. But when you talk about, I know what Derrick Henry signed for. I know what Nick Chubb signed for. I know what Dalvin Cook contract previously was. I know what Christian McCaffrey contract is. He's the highest. He's at like $16 million. And I'm not even asking. Of course. For, I'm not even asking to be the highest paid. In my belief, I believe I'm the best running back in the NFL. You ask me that to my core. I believe, I don't, I don't care about stats. I don't care about this. Like every situation was different. I believe I'm the best running back in the NFL. And I'm not even asking to be paid the highest running back. But like, Whoa. I know, I know the, I know like I could, it's not hard math. I can, I know if I play on a tag two years, which was, I'm not saying a threat, which was someone told me we could tag you twice and you won't hit the open market till you're 28. Well, I know the two years combined, the tag is 22.5. So why would I ever accept a deal that the guaranteed money is not higher than 22.5? I, I, I mean, uh, I can't wait till he's on uh, ESPN game day doing college football with Tim Tebow and Kirk Kirp Street and everyone else. <laughs> I, I people and I laugh because I want to talk about it in a minute, but I just want to break. I, I laugh because people are like, well, he's going to turn out. To, he's not going to lose. He's not going to risk losing ten million dollars. This isn't football back in the eighties and nineties. This isn't football where where players had to have jobs in the off season. Saquon Barkley can go out and do a podcast. Saquon Barkley can go out and become an announcer. Saquon Barkley could be a guest host doing things. Saquon Barkley can easily make $10 million off the field in a year if he really wanted to, which is why he hired CAA, the Creative Artist Agency, which is which was founded in 1975 in Beverly Hills and specialized for years in just entertainment, movies, television, everything such as that. That's in that's one of the reasons I think he brought them in along with Rock Nation. Because there's other avenues or other options. And Saquon Barkley basically just told you, you know, it, it, $10 million is a lot of money. Yes, but it's not my value. And he's setting it just like Joe Shane is setting a value on Saquon Barkley for his um, for his team. Saquon Barkley has set a value for himself. And he's already saying, I'm not asking to be Christian McCaffrey. I'm not asking for that money. And he's even mentioning, I'm not leaking this information. Somebody's leaking this information. And I think he thinks the Giants are doing it. I, I, I would think the Giants were doing it as well. But he knows his own personal value. 
And and it's it's one of those things when he talks about the story about not having money as a kid, about how his uh, you know his parents didn't you know he was offered the endorsement deal and his parents would never even make that much in two years off of one deal, and he understands that. He understands that. Listen, yes, this this is a this is a big number, but at the end of the day, he is sticking to his own personal convictions and he's sticking to his values about what he feels that he is worth. And you have giant fans bashing him for that, saying, "Well, he should just sign a tag. He's being greedy. He just wants to get paid what he's worth or what he perceives that he's worth and what he knows that he is worth to this team." And then I love it because then you go. And, and there was, uh, what was it yesterday? It was, uh, it was the TV show Speak. Uh, and and you, have, uh, you have Shady McCoy and a couple other people on there. But I thought, this, I thought this was interesting, too, after playing that. Let's just play this real quick. This is only a minute. What would you rather invest in? A $350,000 Bentley or a $200,000, $300,000 house? Because a Bentley house. is going... Exactly. Wait, but I got a question though. Well, <laughs> oh, no, 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 who's no, no. Daniel Jones though? He's, a, he's the, the house. house. He's, he's the, the house. house. He's the house. Because the house is the, house. The, house is, <laughs> the, house is the going house. to appreciate yeah. over time. Yeah, right. He's right. not even a condo. He's like was, a he's like a a garage, right? You can rent garages oh. out. No. I mean, we are we really gonna sit here and act like Daniel Jones is this superstar wide receiver? Not quarterback. Nobody's saying that. Okay, so 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 yeah, that's that's just so like you probably get better better each year, right? He's like like. I mean, I can't even say he's getting better each year. He had a really good year because he's a really good coach. Okay. Sure. Uh, uh, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Brian Dable, I, I play under him. So he decides to, he decides to be do. married to that quarterback. But, but here's a ceiling, though. We haven't seen second Barkley's ceiling. This should be an easy one. You ever seen him? The, I know. It is easy. A, a yeah. boxing match and after the fight. Yeah. It's like it's unanimous. Like, we know who the champ should have won. Yeah. It's Saquon Barkley. It's not even close. Hmm. First of all, do you know who the backup uh, quarterback for the Giants is? You know who he is? Is it Tyrod? Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod. Mm-hmm. So you telling me, right? Because the Giants ran the ball a lot with the quarterback. Mm-hmm. If, if, if Daniel Jones, let's say he, he broke a shoelace, right? This is, you know, be safe. You tell me that Tyrod Taylor can't do what he's doing? I'm not saying he can't. Oh my God. Anyway, Saquon Barkley is the, is the most impactful player on that team. He's, he's the biggest player we on the say, team. We didn't, say on impact, we didn't say impactful. We said valuable. More viable. More viable. I, th- I think Saquon is the most impactful. Sa- Saquon is more viable. Mm. Saquon is the more marketable. You see him on every commercial. You will never see Daniel Jones on any commercials. <laughs> I look at the office as a defender. What are we doing, Rick? I, I look as a, I'm, just being, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm going over all the variables. As a defense, to defense comes to, to play the Giants. You think they're really talking about Daniel Jones? I may mention him. But the main key to stop this team is Saquon Barkley. There you go. The main key to stop this team is Saquon Barkley. This is an outside opinion. Of course, he's Shady McCoy, the former Eagle running back as well. Is a little bit biased because of the fact that he, you know, he was he he played under Brian Dable. But he's right. Saquon Barkley, if you talk to people outside of this league, you talk to people outside of the giant bubble, you talk to people, no one's sitting there going, you know, no one's sitting there upset that Saquon Barkley didn't get signed. Everyone, I, I think, uh, you know, James Williams was telling me a story the other day that he was at work and cowboy fans were patting him on the back saying, thank you. <laughs> thank you for signing Daniel Jones and not bringing in Saquon Barkley. It's value. And that's the thing. Saquon Barkley has a value and it's more than a market value. And I've said this before and Darius Slayton came out before, you know, if 31 other men don't think their, their wife is worth buying an engage girlfriend's worth buying an engagement ring. That shouldn't mean that you shouldn't feel like you should go out and spend that money. It's the value to the team. And we've talked about this ad nauseum. Saquon Barkley has a value. If you want to take a look at the ROI or the return on investment, you look at Saquon Barkley and say, okay, his return on investment, if you take a look at the stats Daniel Jones has with Saquon Barkley out and what he has comparable when he's in, it's he's got a losing record. When you take a look at Daniel Jones' stats, when the team does not rush for over 100 yards, he has a losing record. It's the value. It's not the perception. It's an actual value. There is a value you can look at and see and say, this is the value of Saquon to this team. And that's where you have to be at the end of the day. You have to look at his value. And Saquon's even like I said, he's saying, "I'm not looking to, I'm not looking to break the bank. I'm looking to get paid what I'm." And, and he brings up the cap at one point in time in that interview. He brings up the cap and says, "Listen, you're not even offering me the guaranteed money whatsoever if I get tagged two years." And then the Giants came up and went over that. So before everyone's preaching how well Joe Shane does, and I love Joe Shane. I've said this before. I, I'm a Joe Shane fan. But Joe, the jury is still out on Joe Shane. 
we still have to see what cave on Thibodeau is. We still have to see what Evan Neal is. He hasn't had the opportunity really to bring, we have to see what Walla Walla Waller does. He, 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 he we have to see what his free agency moves are going to be. We have to wait and see. I'm not saying he's going to fail. I'm just saying you have to wait and see on Joe Shane right now before you anoint him the end all be all for him not giving an extra million dollars to Saquon Barkley and then having people King of the Almost Sack say that the Leonard Williams deal was now a bad deal when four years ago I had to hear how wonderful it was. It, it, it's it's just the it's just the craziness, and, and that's what and, and if you take a look where the Giants are at situationally. You're going you're to have Matt Breda. He, he's had, he had 20 career starts and 13 of them, I believe, were with the, with the 49ers back in either 18 or 19. He's touched the ball just 175 times over the last three seasons. And Barkley had over 352, and that's with the, with the injury. I don't think he's never down back. I, I you're you're, you're going to take Eric Gray because everyone everyone's obsessed with Eric Gray's the quads again because that's going to make him a great back. But Eric Gray got drafted where he did for a reason. So you have to, and I'm not saying he is not going, to, and, and most people thought that he was going to probably go undrafted. But I'm not saying he's not going to be a mod Bradshaw. I'm not saying he's not going to do that. But you're, again, I had to hear last year how Dane Belton was going to step in and be this star. And how we, we were going to rely on Dane Belton. And Dane Belton got hurt, and then Dane Belton got benched because he missed multitudes of assignments. And he got benched for an extended period of time by Wink. I had to hear about Yusef Corker coming in again. This undrafted free agent is going to step right into the lineup and be a star. Yeah, he didn't even make the team. So you're, again, you're putting a lot of pr- and I like Eric Gray. I met Eric Gray. I've posted pictures with me and Eric Gray. Great kid. Good mentality. Good focus. But again, you're relying on this, this lower round draft choice to come in and replace Saquon Bar- Barkley. You got Gary Brightwell, who's only got 32 career carries. He did score a touchdown, I think, in the Packers game. Yeah, it was the Packers game. And then you got, you got Corbin from last year. So your, your running back room is not filled with talent, and you're not going to go out with that minimal amount of salary. You have that $4 million and go out and sign another option because you can't. Because you still have to worry about the rule of 51 expiring the day camp breaks. Shane has talked about multitudes of times before that he wants to have operational cap space, at least $10 million during the season. And he's already said that he's already basically come out and said he's against doing anything with the Leonard Williams or Dory Jackson contract because he wants them off the books. If you're already on the, if you're already on the hook for Saquon for 10, what was really the thought process behind not going up to 12? Kind of, listen, kind of listening to Saquon Barkley, what was the thought process of not going up to at least $24 million guaranteed over two? It's not a long-term deal. By the time the deal would end, he would be 28. But what, what, so what, what, was, what, what, what was so hard-ass about that, coming up with an extra $4 million over two years? Not saying that would have brought Barkley in, but what, was, what would have been the problem doing that for a running back right now who's 26 years old and wouldn't be 28, it would be only 28 after that contract expired? Now the Giants, of course, cannot negotiate with Barkley until until next year. But there are a couple there are a couple things they can do. I mean, they could give him a little bit more money. Uh, I, there's there's I don't I don't remember exactly how you do it, but there's a way you can give someone a little bit more money on on the tag. He they, the Giants can also come out and and agree uh, with Barkley that they won't tag him next year. They they could they could, they can make that they can make that agreement. Where they say, "Hey, listen, you sign a tag this year. We are not. Gonna, we won't tag you next year, and you become an unstri- unrestricted free agent." So they they could they could do they could do that. You know they they can also do like uh, Yannick Ngagwe did. He he agreed to play a little bit more. He he agreed to sign a contract that was a little bit less than the tag, so he could be traded. They, the Giants could potentially do that, and like I said, or they could just go nuclear. And just rescind the tag and then go out to the running back market and you have your 14 million and you go out and try to sign a running back. But you cannot undervalue Saquon Barkley. And this is probably the last Saquon Barkley video we're going to do for a little bit because I think the topic, I think the topic is tired because until he does something, this is, this is just going to hang over at camp. But I've said it before. If he sits out the entire season, I would not be shocked. 
I had someone who told me, and we did a video on it, that he wasn't going to sign the tag and that he could potentially sit out the season, and I believe that person. So we, we're going to have to just wait and see how this drama unfolds. Don't forget, we have the big show on Sunday with our zero B Sunday Giants. Make sure you tune in for that. It's every 1030. We're going to be giving away some um, training camp tickets as well. I'll be going to the camp those days. So you get to, if you want, you can hang out with me and some other people that are gone. So that, that'll be fun. We'll talk about that maybe a little bit more on Sunday. And again, this is Tim. This is New York Giants Straight Talk. And don't forget to like, turn and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell because you want to know why. That'd be awesome.